Thank you for bringing us to you. Thank you for your goodness to us. As a church, thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for answered prayers. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We just appreciate you today. We bless you. Amen. Father, as I go into your word, I submit my faculties, everything to you. Father, use me as your oracle this morning. Amen. Oh God, Father, wherever we are in this stage of evangelism, help every one of us, Amen. Almighty God. Amen. Make us conscious of your habit in this area. Amen. Father, help us. Amen. Help us indeed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, okay, um, we are doing what is called um, Explosive Road Drive. It's from the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Um, it's a, that's why we had to postpone what we are preaching as a series. It's for this July, and the whole idea is for us to synthesize about ourselves about the harvest and also take steps for uh, those that join the Bible study on Tuesdays. It's what we're doing, so this is for the whole month of July. And we have to do it that way because we all need help in this area. Praise the Lord. That's why we are talking about it today. So today, the topic will be, and if you listen to any redeemed church, that is exactly what we are saying all over is this month is dedicated as explosive blood drive so it's about harvest it's about evangelism so um today is understanding the harvest that's our topic praise the lord On, and our text is taken from matthew 9 matthew 9 uh, 36 to 38 matthew 9 36 to 38 then jesus went about all the cities and villages teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered, like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray the Lord of the harvest. What do you do? Pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send out laborers into his harvest. So number one is number one, the harvest is already there. We can't say, oh, nobody wants to know. Until you are already out, you will know a seeking heart. You cannot even see the need from somebody's face. You, if you know, uh, one of the things uh, I've learned from uh, the program we engage in every fortnight is that even the fact that somebody is tying her tie or her job does not mean they will be unreceptive to the gospel because you don't know where their journey has been. You don't know what that's facing. But you know, the tendency to lot is that when you see a proper Muslim, you say, oh, no, no, this one. But no, praise the Lord. But what I'm saying is that the harvest is there. The harvest is plentiful. When Jesus was here, he said the harvest is plentiful. And now the harvest is still plentiful. Praise the Lord. One of the things we are going to discuss here is how you practicalize this, some of these things. Because sometimes, because sometimes we are in a different culture. How do I go about telling somebody about my faith? How do I do it? How do I do it subtly so that I'm not accused of, you know, uh, encroaching or something? So we'll talk about it too. So now, because the harvest is already ready, we have to prepare for the harvest. Praise the Lord. So um, let's go to John 4.35. John 4.35 says, Say not ye that are yet four months. And then come and harvest. Behold, I say unto you, this is Jesus talking to us again. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. So don't wait. What Jesus, with this John 4, Jesus is telling us about the need to seize the moment. Don't say, oh no, oh, when I get another job, oh, when I start working, oh, when my job gives me more time. Because he says, seize this moment, because the harvest is needed. One thing about harvest, no matter how much you have tended the crops, no matter how much fat it came out, you know, like big ripe mangoes, if they are not harvested, they spoil. That's the truth. Do you know, possibly, there could be people that maybe they want to kill themselves. But because nobody reached them at that moment to tell them there is hope in Jesus, they will still die. Because nobody reached out to them. Do you understand? So they are always so once you don't, if you don't seize the moment, the harvest will be wasted. 
And brethren, you see, one of the things I notice here, may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Satan will keep us busy. I'm not talking about busy now with our stuff too, you know, like the legitimate things we don't have to go to work and all. But Satan also will keep you busy. Sometimes, with one issue after another, you keep fighting. You're fighting, you know, like every prayer opportunity you have, what are you doing? My needs. My needs. So, doing God's thing has to be intentional. It has to be by faith. That even when I'm not praying for my needs that are many, that I'm praying for people, maybe people in my office, I take them as mine. You understand? As I'm talking to you, I'm talking to myself because sometimes I don't remember to pray for them. I take it now as a need. To tell you the truth, the need will be resolved. You understand? One of the promises that God says, he said, he says that if my word abide in you, and you, they say, ask what you will. Part of the need for God is that this is such a hard bit for God that when people take themselves out to do this, you won't have to worry because everything we do as Christians is by faith. Can I leave myself for now? Because I believe God is taking care of me. Or am I so faithless that how many times I pray about this because I don't believe that God has answered me? Which category do you belong to? Do we understand? Do we understand? It's not that prayer is not important. Why don't you, because you pray for that thing, anytime you bring it before God, say, bring it as thanksgiving and face the issues that are around. Things are not getting better. Many people will be, do you know that the Bible says at the end of time, that it says that things will be so bad. Period time, the Bible called it. You know, you, when you saw the school, that was one of the scriptures. This is Second Timothy, uh, one of the any scriptures we are supposed to do, that things will be so bad. Men will be lovers of themselves, uh, unthankful, this, 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 this. Please, we are saved at this moment. Not for us to go to work, come back, come and warm the chairs. Okay? Some of us actually, that's exactly what we do. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Warm the chairs, then go back home to, for till next Sunday. There's purpose. For your salvation. If there's no purpose, the day we are born again, the day we gave our life, God would have taken us home sins. Because there's no need for to keep us here. In in the light of eternity, whatever we are doing, all these things is meaningless. In the sense that the things that we will carry with us are eternal things. How much are you involved in those eternal things? Because the enemy is very, very crafty. He will bring issues. We are solving one, another one is coming. The ability to know that my father, he said my father knows you have need of these things before you ask him. Is that not what he said? But he wants us to be more intercessory. How many of us pray? How many of us even pray for the government? Pray for anything that is beyond our, oh, um, is there's nothing wrong with God prospering me and all. But please, this has to be in their right priority. Praise the Lord. From now on, God wants us, this July is a change of habits, change of mindset because this is what we'll be hearing every time. Because we need to change. Hello? We need to change. In where we're coming from, uh, at least my country, if, you, if you're not driving, you enter the bus. I used to do it. You can stand. Nobody will crucify you or challenge you and all. We do such things. And then every time you go out, every weekend is evangelism. I don't know if you've been there before. Every weekend. And you hear people and you even see people. And, but when you come to a culture where it's like, it's, what is that talking about? You know, like, they look at you like, there's one we say, God bless you. And it's like, if you see the eye she gave us, apparently she's an atheist. Now for her to roll her eyes, of course, we say, God bless you. But what I'm trying to say, they still need God here. Yeah. God brought us here. They still need God. So, see, I've told, this, I've told us before, the reason why we are not seeing opportunities is because we are not praying for one. Hello? Am I talking to somebody? The reason why we are not seeing opportunities is that we are not praying for one. When we begin to pray every day, Father, give me an opportunity to talk to somebody today. Even if to encourage somebody. Even if to say, see, I'm a Christian. This, you care? They've taught us. 
nothing can lie about your, your experience. If all else is share your testimony, how God has helped you. How God has helped you. You're a prayerful person. How God has helped you. I gave my life before this, this, this. That's all that is needed. You don't even need to quote scripture. The fact that here yeah, I still have challenges, but because I have God, I have peace. A lot of people don't have peace. A lot of people, they, they don't even know what peace is all about. Praise the Lord. So God expects us, every single one of us, every single one of us, to be about the Father's business from now on. Praise the Lord. So we continue. So how do we prepare for the harvest? Um, 2 Timothy 2.21, can you quickly go there? Preparation is key. Um, if a man therefore purge himself from this, purge yourself from what? He shall be a vessel unto honor. We need to purge ourselves for some things. That's why we're sharing what we're sharing. Because the topic today is preparing for it. If a man purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Prepared for the master's uh, sanctified and meet for all another version we say prepared for the master's use. God will use every one of us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. But you see, there's preparation. And what we want to discuss are the things that will help us to prepare for what God wants us to do. Number one, holiness. Um, holiness is essentially preparing for the harvest because it reflects the nature of Christ to those who are sharing the gospel with. Let's bring it practically. If now my colleague at work, hmm? my colleague at work, you know sometimes you meet a lot of issues at work. Me? For no reason. And you go on their level. You know what I mean by on them? You give them as they give you. Will you have mouth to ever open your mouth and tell them, eh, come to Jesus? No? You can't. You will be a better witness that they are on this negative side. You are showing them love. You are forgiving. I, you understand me? You are. Then, when you open your mouth to talk, because unbelievers, they are the first to tell you who is a Christian or not. I don't know if you know that. They will look at you and say, hey, that one, uh, in name. But if you're who you are, yes, yeah, some of them, your collapse style will convict them. But at the same time, if they have a problem, they know who to go to. But if you're like them, just like them in every way, if they write a wrong time sheet to do the same thing, you shit for 15 minutes. What's your testimony? What's your witness? They talk, um, loot, they call it um, loot talk in the office. You know those talks that do not edify? Sex talk. Hey, they say, and you join them and you laugh. What's the difference between you and them? Which, where do you now separate to be different? Do you understand me? They use, even sometimes you join them too, even using the F, U, word and all. What's the difference? Because even those words, people know that it's wrong. Why would they apologize when they say it in my presence? Because they know. Somehow, somehow. Yeah, they use it uh, every word, every word. But when they say it in your presence, when you are where you are supposed to be, there are certain things that cannot even happen in your presence. It's because we are not making our mark. There is no difference between us and them. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So, holiness. Because that holiness will give us the mouth. Or we are witnesses for Jesus. We are more like, you know, there's something about God that when we live as children of God, it's attractive. Yes, it's attractive. It will attract some that are demonized. They will hate you for no reason. I'm not telling you it's going to be all nice. Some people will hate you for no reason. It's because you challenge them. It's because your lifestyle is a, how do I put it? It's a, it's like you remind them that they shouldn't be doing what they're doing. But others who are on that fence, who are really, they will be drawn to you. They will ask you. They will even sometimes they will come and when they know that you pray that you can pray for them, they will ask you to pray for them. When they are down, they will come to you for encouragement. Are you providing that space in your office? Praise the Lord. So now, um, so be holy in order before it is it's written, be ye holy because I am holy. Our life should mirror God's holiness, drawing others to him through our actions and words. You can't preach a holy God if you are living in iniquity. Your message will be powerless and will lack for conviction. You won't even, you know, when you say things, it won't be convicting. What convicts people is the anointing. What undergirds the anointing is the fact that you're living right. Righteousness. Righteousness are in two parts. The one 
given to you as a child of God. And the one, the outworking of that what you are inside, outworking in your daily day, everyday life. Then, the two of them go together. Praise the Lord. No matter what, a, a woman of God was saying that God never blesses disobedience. Take it from here to tomorrow. God will never bless disobedience. The reason is because if you are disobedient, even when God even has solution for you, you will still disobey. You will still disobey because you're so, yeah, you intellectualize everything. Holy Spirit will tell you why you use 20 reasons to tell you why it's not so or why it's not. So when the help will come for you, even in your problem, you will still not obey God. May God help us in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. So number two is prayer. Let's go to Colossians 4.2. Colossians 4.2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Guys, part of the reason why I was mentioned is that the reason why it doesn't even think about it, every day we go out, we doesn't even like, even weekends, nothing, is because we are not praying about it. If we are praying about it, to tell you to God will begin to lay people in your heart in this area that you can pray for, God will begin to say, go and encourage that person. It's going to be okay. I know, you know, my mom just, there's somebody, oh, my mom just had cancer. It's going to be okay. I don't know if you believe in prayer, but I'm going to pray for your mom. I said, God will lead you to people. God will lead you to people that are sad, that give you the right word to say, because you've been praying. But if you've not been praying, one challenge, your heart will not, even the Holy Spirit will even tell you, you say, Lord of Jesus, you want me to be in trouble. But God cannot lead you into trouble. When God knows that that heart is right, and it's leading you to do something. God knows where everybody is in the journey. So a lot of prayer. Please, now, if nothing else. I did it before when they say, uh, I am Andrew. What did Andrew do? Andrew came to Jesus and went to bring um, Peter. Philip also came to Jesus and went to bring Nathaniel. You understand? One by one. One by one. Praise the Lord. Take up somebody. Maybe your place of work. Take off something. Keep praying for them. You know, Paul says in First Corinthians, he said, um, um, I, 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 I planted Apollo's water. God gave the increase. You are in two stages in this journey. It's either you're planting, maybe the person has never, nobody has ever told them about Jesus before. Or you're watering what they've already been told, and God is using you to water that seed. A time will come when all that thing will be, all the resistance will break. There's nobody, especially in this place, with television and everything that has not heard. So most times we may be watering. But the point is that as we're praying, what will happen is that God will break down, break down all the resistance in their life. The reason why they've given God that they don't want to. You know, because basically most of most people is because of rebellion. I want to live my own way. I want to live my way. You can't tell me what to do. That's why they don't even the so-called atheism is because of rebellion. I don't want anybody to tell me what to do. But your prayer will begin to break down, break down, break down, break down. Until this, their heart is tender towards God. Praise the Lord. I want to prove to every one of us that the reason why we even gave our life is because somebody prayed for us. Somebody prayed for us. He didn't just air uh, ahead. And then I agreed. It's not, it doesn't happen that way. Somebody prayed for us. I remember at the beginning, in our um, setting at that time, you know, Christians, you don't wear this, you don't wear trousers, you don't wear this. And, and then when they preach to me, I would say, do you know what the enemy will come and tell me? <laughs> if you join them now, you know you like trousers. You won't be wearing trousers anymore. Can you imagine? <laughs> but that was our setting. Everything the enemy can use. Or, you know, now what will your friends say? What will your friends say? You know you have these wonderful friends. Until all those resistance were removed. What I'm trying to say, it could be anything that the enemy can use somebody from giving their lives. Until God breaks down all the resistance and opens their heart to receive the gospel. God will use you from now on in Jesus' name. Amen. So, he said, when we pray for guidance, and then again, if like this one we've done, we've been praying about it since our, even our midweek meeting, we've been praying about our our going out today. So that God will you pray for guidance, wisdom, boldness, and opportunities to share the gospel. That's what we do. Opportunities. We we'll pray, pray consciously now for opportunities. Father, give me opportunity. Give me wisdom on how to do it. And God will begin to you because you have prayed about it. The Holy Spirit will minister to you. See that work, a colleague at work. Go and encourage them. You know, because sometimes, like 
Andrew, I am Andrew is a relationship evangelism. It's called relationship evangelism. When you form a relationship with somebody and you begin to pray for them and you begin to help them, that's 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 the one that they brought people to Jesus. It's different from the psycho one where she went and brought a lot of people. But I am Andrew is about relationship evangelism. The friends that are close to you that don't know God. Sometimes, um, even the church we are talking about, please, who give birth to sheep? Sheep give birth to sheep, not shepherd. I'm the shepherd. Sheep give birth to sheep. Where we are is because you guys are not doing your work. Because it's sheep that bring sheep. Do you understand? My job is to equip you with the word. Then you go and bring sheep. That's how it's supposed to be. How many times, even normal inviting people to friends, you keep bothering them. A man of God, I think he's a nasty do first thing. I don't know if you guys have heard that. This guy in the office kept bothering the husband. The man will be rude. The man will do everything. Ed is the husband's name. The, man, the husband is late now. The man will be rude. The man will be everything. Do you know what uh, the, the guy will do? Sometimes he will say... Um, He's, he used to say, when Ed will be rude, every word and all, he will notice that the man will go to the toilet. Go to the toilet and then come back. The next day again, he's inviting him. So one day, he said, you know, okay, I will go. That day he went, he gave his life. This took over one year. He gave his life, became a Christian, and was on fire for God. This man became a big man of God. Then he kept, he asked the friend, what is that thing that every time when I I am so angry with you and I, and I say some words and I notice you go to the toilet? Why do you go to the toilet? He said, I go to the toilet so I can control my emotion. <laughs> so I don't lash out. Do you understand? So I don't lash out. So I go to the toilet and, you know, like, so, and God will give me grace again until this guy became a big man of God. So what I'm trying, God can use anybody. It's not left for pastors or whatever. This is for everyday opportunity, not everyday faith. Praise the Lord. Every day. Be praying for them. Take up somebody as a project. Write their name. Be praying for them. Praise the Lord. So, um, a prayer equips us with the power of the Holy Ghost and boldness to preach the word with much utterance. Let's go to Acts 4, 4.29. That's for twenty nine. Yeah, he said, and now, Lord, behold their threatening, and grant unto your servants that which with that with all boldness they may speak your word. We need boldness. That with all boldness, this is what one of the things we'll be praying to for the church. We need boldness to speak the word of God. Praise the Lord. Then another one is. Uh, the word. We are talking about the things that are necessary. Preparing for this harvest. Praise the Lord. The word of God. Let's go to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Yeah, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto good works. What is the what is the word doing to you now under this particular? Look, tell me what the word is doing now. On this one we are doing, what is it doing to you? Is it under correction? Correction, yes. For reproof or correction. Correction. Sometimes the word of God is actual reproof. Some people would have experienced it when I tell them this is not right. You can't do this anymore. Reproof. That's it. That's the word of God. So the reason why we need the word of God is that, number one, you can't preach what you don't know. Praise the Lord. Amen. By immersing ourselves in the word of God, we gain a deeper understanding of God's message, his love for humanity, and his plan of salvation. Praise the Lord. In a world where several doctrines are flying around, especially now, you will meet all sorts. If you're not grounded, you will tend to be, before you know it, to start arguing yours, arguing. And you know some people will even come, and I met it, they will come and throw a question at you. They are not, 
You know, they, they call them uh, what they, ungodly questions because they are not really waiting for an answer. They want to use that question as a hook to engage you with arguing. Avoid those people. Just tell them God loves you. Avoid them. We'll meet them several times. All they are doing, and when they are arguing with you, sir, they're already agitated. Because the spirit in them is a horrible spirit. They're already agitated. And if you're not careful, they're ready to. There's one I told us that we have to even usher him and say, please, we ask the council for this for this space, you cannot, you have to leave us now. And he says, sorry, you have to leave. Or we'll call the police because we we'll ask the council for this space. There's, I mean, because he has engaged everybody in our group there. Everybody. He's still arguing, still arguing. When I came to all the arguments, I said, please, sir, what is your name? He refused to. I said, all I want is your name. I'm not arguing. With you. What's your name? He said his name. I said, in Jesus' name, God, open his eyes. Because the reaction, you see, when a when you throw something that is painful to a pack of dogs, who is the one that will yell the most? The one that is hit. So the ones that react the most are the ones that are under conviction. But those are the ones we tend to avoid. Is that not so? If they are under conviction, they will be, you know, like you even want those ones because you don't want the one that are indifferent. The one under conviction is the one that will be more violent and all. So I say, please, I pray for you. You will not escape this prayer. God will show you. Jesus will reveal himself to you. Because he's from another faith. And most of them, it's when Jesus reveals himself to them that, I mean. So, and we say, but you have to leave us. Praise the Lord. So what I'm trying to say, if you don't know your onions, and they will tell you, oh, Jesus is not the son of God. Yeah, the Bible, and they will call the Bible to you. If you don't know your, your, the word, You'll be bamboozled. It's like, huh? Huh? No. But for any reason, by the way, as we are doing what we are doing, even if you don't know all the arguments, just keep saying John 3 16. What's John 3 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. That's the gospel in a nutshell. God loves you, brother. God, I know that God loves you. I may not explain it very well. I know what he's done in my life. I spoke to you this morning. For some of them that say, hey, God is not real. Hey, I say, sorry, I spoke to him. Even now I can speak to him anytime because he's my father. You can't argue with experience. You can argue with anything you can't argue. That's your experience. My experience is different. But you have to be sure, confident. Praise the Lord. May God help us in Jesus' name. Now the final one is, um, can we just read Ephesians 4, 13 and 14? Studying the word brings us to maturity. And then the final one will be being filled with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. To we all come, yes, it's the right one. To we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So that we do not hope, we, we henceforth be no two more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine. That's what I was saying. When you know who you are, Nobody can dissuade you out of it. Praise the Lord. Because there are so many uh, shades of Christianity now. And they're not really Christians. But they will present a bit like it's true. What is true? And then when you go deeper, you will know that. Oh, nah. But they will not come and tell you those big ones. They will start with a bit. Like, yeah, do you agree with Yes. So God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Amen. So when you are throughout the book of the Acts of the Apostles, we saw the impact of the Holy Spirit. In the life of the apostles, and they went around preaching the gospel. Acts 10 8, please. 10 38. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Praise the Lord. So that's the scripture. The Holy Ghost equips us with boldness. It's the Holy Spirit that gives us boldness. Okay? As we preach the gospel, the Holy Ghost in us also enables us. To work the miraculous and supernatural in the mission field is as you go out. The Bible says that as they went out, God walks with them with signs following. So we can't get experience the miraculous unless we go out. Praise the Lord. So, so we can't understand the harvest conclusion. We can't understand the harvest on our own. We need the revelation of the blood of Jesus. So we need revelation. We we also need to engage in prayer to soften the hearts of the souls and to bring God's presence and power for a successful harvest. 
Without holiness, we can't see God working with us uninterruptedly. And that is why if we are not yet born again, the word, the work of harnessing, harvesting souls will not be appealing and will not be successful. So one prayer I want us to pray as we stand up. Father, Father. let your blood cleanse me from all unrighteousness so that I will enjoy your unhindered presence now more than ever before in Jesus' name. So let's just stand up and ask God to make us conscious of what we are talking about today. We all of, most of us will walk in places that God will make us conscious of perishing souls. God will make us... And another thing I want us to ask is the body. That we just... It's not, we don't see people in the flesh anymore. We see them as souls. That when they die, they will go to the fire without Jesus. That we'll see people through the eyes of God. The way God sees people is the way we we'll see people. Let's begin to ask God for this help. Praise the Lord.